I think Mahogany Homes is the best way to level your construction, and I'm gonna prove it to you guys. With the advanced powers of this thing called math, I will calculate how much everything is gonna cost, how long it's gonna take, compare it to other construction training methods, and generally just make my case on the matter. Joke's on you guys though, I was able to obtain numbers that are better than what's listed on the wiki, so you are legally obligated to stay and watch the whole thing, and maybe like and subscribe. I mean, come on, are we gonna let this guy beat me to 10k subs? Don't you wanna get in before it's cool to subscribe to me? Anyway, let's go over the numbers and then just talk about what I did to get them. I wanna preface this part by saying I was running contracts at max or near max efficiency. I have all of the necessary items that can boost XP levels, and I used my excess reward points to buy supply crates that gave me a small refund on my supply cost. With all of that in mind, Here's what I was able to obtain. Most of it's pretty self-explanatory, you know, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but your supply crate refund usually isn't all that much. You know, I'm pretty sure the average GP for them is like 10K each. So that part can vary a little bit, but it plays a very minimal role overall. What I wanted to focus more on is the GP per XP. You know, just how much each experience point is going to cost you. With my example numbers, you can see that level 70 contracts are almost three times the GP per XP of the next one down. You know, this will vary a bit based on the market prices of the day, but generally this is what you're gonna expect. I don't remember the exact amount of time that I ran contracts, but let's just say I did them from 90 to 99. With all the numbers I gathered, it would cost us 48.9 mil and take 31.3 hours to make it through. This does sound like a lot, but let's compare it to some of the other popular construction training methods. When we look at it that way, it might not seem so bad price-wise. Other methods are faster, but you're definitely going to pay for that better XP rate. I already know what some people are going to say though. But try hard. If I use the time I saved from Oak Dungeon Doors instead of Mahogany Homes to kill Vorkath at max level, it would be better. You know what I have to say to that? You're right. If you compared time saved to Vorkath profit on just about anything, it usually ends up being better. You know, I personally just don't like to boil everything down to efficient Vorkath hours played, because that's not fun to me, but I can't deny that it's a valid opinion. If you are intrigued by running contracts, let me transition you over to the next screen and talk about what you need to get the XP rates that I did. As far as requirements go, there really isn't a big barrier to entry to run contracts. As long as you have a house and completed the mini quest Daddy's Home, you can start running them right away. However, I would at least recommend this stuff over here before you started a significant grind. You know, these items make a measurable difference in what rates you're gonna get. Although max efficiency will require some additional stuff on top of that. Let's talk about your gear and inventory. As a mid-level account running for the first time, this is probably what your setup will look like. The Ring of Dueling is for rebanking at Castle Wars when you need more planks, and the staff just saves you a little bit of money on runes. I highly recommend getting individual teleport tabs instead of using portal rooms in your house because it's just faster, even though you would save more inventory spots without them. You could substitute a Ring of Wealth for the Falador teleport, but I just didn't want to deal with replacing them honestly. But technically it would be closer to where you need to go. Side note, you absolutely want to get the plank sack as soon as possible. It helps tremendously with saving time on rebanking and increasing XP. Once you are able to make some of those big boy upgrades, you'll be looking like this. I want to point out that Amy's saw should be the last thing you unlock with the reward points. Opening up that one extra inventory slot can very rarely let you do one additional contract before you have to rebank. I mean, you could even use the equippedable hammer instead if you have it unlocked by chance. It'll provide the same benefit. Also, the Explorer's Ring is just an emergency run energy restore, if you mess up. Totally not necessary. When it comes to running contracts, let me tell you what's going to be necessary and tell you my pro tips for getting the best rates. I'm gonna make an assumption here that you kind of know what Mahogany Homes is. You run around to a few predetermined areas, spam click on broken furniture, talk to the homeowner at the end for a big XP drop, restoring run energy with a cup of tea if you need it, and finally, NPC contacting Amy to pick up a new contract. Rebanking when you need more planks. Pretty simple. 
Every time you accept a new contract, you'll be told exactly where it is down below in chat. In Runelight, I believe Mahogany Homes is turned on by default. This makes it wildly easy to see where you need to go and what you need to repair. I would also recommend you download the Plank Sack plugin so you know what's in it at a glance. However, it just isn't always 100% accurate, so you will want to hit check on it when it starts to get low, just to be sure you really have what it says. Beyond that, most of the time you'll be holding the spacebar and spamming the 4 key. It is much faster than manually clicking on your text and the building options. Whatever level contract you're doing will have the same number in the build menu as the text options. You'll see the build menus basically fly off the screen and keep you moving fluidly. You also want to make sure in Menu Entry Swapper that NPC Contact is selected. This is going to allow you to shift click to contact Amy rather than right clicking and selecting it manually. So most of the time you'll just be running to the next contract and rebank teleporting when you need supplies. There are going to be some variations of this that can save you some time though. For this reason, I'm going to say that you always want to NPC contact before you teleport to rebank. For example, if you are out of supplies but you get a Falador contract, a bank will actually be on the way there that you can resupply from, which saves you time and a bank teleport. Additionally, if you are out of supplies at a Falador contract, it is faster to run to the bank nearby rather than teleport to one and then teleport back. This can also apply specifically to the contract west of the estate agent's house in Hosidius. That specific spot has an additional quirk of being able to run over to the estate agents and starting a contract rather than using NPC contact. It might be very slightly faster, it's hard to tell, but it definitely saves you money. You could even make a case for this at the northernmost Varak contract too. Either way, I feel like it would only make a marginal difference. When it comes to actually building the furniture, I would say the most important thing you can do is stand next to multiple build spots at once, if it's possible. The less time you're moving around in the house, the better. This next bit, I have no actual proof that it helps, but I will fight you on it. Whenever I'm on a spot that can touch two build areas, I always rip out the old stuff before I build the new pieces. Also, if one of the pieces only requires one click, I will repair it after I build something that required a menu. I mean, just look at how close those XP drops are. It has to make it faster. It just has to help. It just has to, I can't take it. Anyway, if you still feel like Mahogany Homes isn't for you, that's okay. RuneScape is a vast game with many ways to play. You should always do what you would enjoy the most and carve out your own path. I just wanted to give you an option to consider. It might take a little bit of extra time to make it to 99, but 240k an hour is pretty decent. Yeah, that's not bad. Especially when you compare it to the less than favorable skills. If you made it this far in the video though, congrats! You're one of the 30% that make it here. And I appreciate you. You have my personal invitation to join the Discord if you want some free giveaways. I also want to thank my past and present patrons for directly supporting the channel. Even if you guys aren't one of them, feel free to ask me any questions you have on Mahogany Homes or RuneScape in general. I hope you all have a wonderful last day, and I'll see you in the next one. Ooh, ooh.